Been there for a long time, great man, but apparently Megan thinking seriously about politics. Dear God, it was always going to happen. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Lovely to see you too. Now, listen, if this story is true, let's be blunt here, right? Uh, if this is a woman who needs, you know, people, needs votes, needs people to like her, <laughs> and let's not forget that this is a woman who only got 200 people to download that very woke poem, which was attached, of course, to her uh, 40 times 40 incentive, you know, when she allegedly uh, had a 40th birthday. And you do kind of think to yourself, well, you know, if you can't get that, and also on a more serious note, let's be honest, when you when you have the opportunity to get near a president, that whether you like President Trump or not, he was popular. He did get, you know, the, the, the votes and all that sort of stuff. When she had the opportunity to meet with him in London, she passed on that and lumped that to Prince Harry. So the only way that she could try and get some popularity moving into politics would be to get him to do a lot of the groundwork, and possibly he will do. He is still liked in certain areas, but um, this, of course, is from a woman who wanted to remain private and uh, choose a different life. Well, wow. again, <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, you know, I, I, I think it's fun to talk about on the telly, but obviously the, the implausibility of it is fairly obvious. But, but it goes back to that central point, right, which was we are leaving the family because we want out of the spotlight, right? Straight into the interview, okay, fine, you've got something to say, fair enough, right? Oh, no, no, into the Netflix deal, into the... It never ends, all right? There's no, yes. there's, 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 there's no tunnel, it's just all light. Yeah, well, I think the, the bigger problem, what I find quite funny is, you know, it would be a really good test... To, to just sort of see where she could go with this. Look, she's a very ambitious woman. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I admire ambition. But you also have to have a reality and think, you know, where could I go with this? Now, when you look at a lot of the projects that we've got coming up, we've got this animated thing with David Furnish, the cartoon, right? We've got Prince Harry's book. Yes, they've got to make money. They've got to live. I get all of that. But everything's really tawdry. If they had just disappeared for a year, maybe, and thought, OK, we'll have a quiet life, and then build the bridges back. But they've just gone at it sort of hammer and tong. And over here, you know, Meghan Markle is really, really disliked, let me tell you. They, they talk about the younger people, like, you know, that's not the feedback when I'm out on the streets filming. She seems to have sort of burnt a lot of bridges. And Prince Harry, to me, looks like a man sat on Mogadon. You know, I don't know what's happened to him. But if yeah. you saw the GQ speech, you think, you know, when's he going to come alive again, you know? Yeah, but also it was that thing where, look, you know, I get it. Nobody's going to sort of be their raging Vegas self for the rest of their life. But a bloke who served his country, knew his role in the family, and I get it, like nobody that, you know, you don't want to live a life of being spare parts for other royals. I can get all of that stuff. But there is a, a midpoint between that and where he sits right now, which is that if the political thing happens, and it's not going to happen, but what? So he had to give up all of his ambition in order to service hers? That's weird. Do you know, I mean, that, that's the weird thing, isn't it, actually, when you think about it, this, you know, on a serious note, Prince Harry sacrificed a lot, you know, and whichever way he's in love, I get it, you know, he's a father, that side of it is the thing, the element that he really wanted. I always knew Prince Harry wants to be a dad, you could sense that, do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. But I think he's really given all of it, he's sort of been like a, a complete wet blanket, you know, and let this woman dictate, you know, the narrative, and also not just trashed her own family, but now trashed his on international TV. So really, when he, you know, and I say this loosely, if it doesn't work out, um, <laughs> where is he going to be moving forward? We would welcome him back, but what a damaged individual that now could possibly be. Oh, but the comeback story, mate. The comeback story. People always love it. Thank you, Neil. We'll be talking about all of it between now and inevitably.